Hey everyone, I'm Scott Stokely, and this is the three most important things you need to be doing to get more distance out of your backhand. But first, if you want really cool, fun daily disc golf content, there's a link below to a playlist to my daily vlog. All right, right off the bat, I'm going to assume that you have a run-up and an X-step. Uh, those, especially the X-step, is the most important thing, but nowadays everybody does it, so we're going to brush past that. Uh, this is the three things that are the most important. Uh, when I say most important, that means there are more things you need to do than this. I've just uh, pinpointed those top three things that you must do. Number one. You have to plant your foot before you start pulling the disc. Remember, you are effectively a whip when you throw, but the handle of the whip is not here. The handle of the whip is in your foot. The whip goes up your leg. This is the middle of the whip, and your fingertips are the tip of the whip. When you crack a whip, the handle of the whip must go first. The tip of the whip must get there last. I'm going to put a link down below. I made a whole longer video explaining the details of how to make this happen. I won't cover that here, but there's a link down below. I suggest you check it out. But number one, you got to put your foot down before you throw. When you throw your backhand, plant first, then you throw the disc. Now, I'm going to cut to a couple of my favorite pros throwing in slow motion so you can see, but when you watch them throw, you will notice that that plant foot hits the ground before any other part of their body, before any other part of the whip has begun moving forward. So number one, got to plant that foot first before you begin pulling the disc. Number two, don't swivel your forearm. Okay, your forearm is not going to go this direction. Your forearm is going to be in a position so the two hinges, the elbow and wrist, on each side of the forearm are moving parallel to the ground. This is the motion that your forearm goes, not this. Now, there's two important reasons for that that both affect distance. Number one, when you're trying to get distance, you basically want the nose of the disc to not be up or down, all right? If the disc is penetrating through the air, it needs to be as efficient as possible. If it's flying with the nose up or the nose down, you're not achieving maximum efficiency. Swiveling your forearm is how you put the nose up and how you put the nose down. Put it in position so it doesn't do that. But the second reason has to do with the speed at the end of the whip. Now, I'm gonna cut to a fancy, I got a cameraman now, I'm gonna cut to a fancy overhead shot so you can see exactly why this is important. Remember, back to the whip analogy, if your feet are the handle of the whip, they're not going that fast. The fastest part of the whip is going to be the end of the whip. This is the part of the whip that's gonna crack. Now, Look at how fast this part of the whip is moving relative to this part. This is the end. This is almost at the end when you don't swivel. When I do this, you can see this part of the whip moving through space. But the fingertips are a blur. A blur. They're moving so much faster than this part of the whip. Now look what happens if you swivel. Remember the swiveling forearm? Look at what happens if I swivel the whip. The mere fact that I am swiveling my forearm means that this part of the whip, the tip, is no longer going through space faster than this part of the whip. There is no acceleration from here to here. So if you swivel, you are losing everything at the tip of the whip that makes it crack. You are losing the snap. The third thing you're going to do is actually what you're not going to do. What you're not going to do is you're not going to keep your head forward. Here's why. Look at the position my body gets into if I don't keep my head forward. That's how far I can get back on the reach back. Now look at the position my body's in if my head were to have remained forward. This is where I'm starting to throw from. Instead of starting to throw from here, I'm effectively starting to throw 
mid swing. I'm removing a portion of my backswing. Basically, if you keep your head forward, it's like you're playing ball golf and you draw the club back two thirds of the way and stop. I mean, sure, you can still play golf like that, but you will lose all the power that comes from the first third of the swing. Now, the reason why players keep their head forward is obvious. It's because you want to look where you're throwing. That's not unreasonable. It's not illogical. You just have to understand that in disc golf, if you want to throw with power, you don't. When you throw with power on a backhand throw, you're effectively throwing blind. It's part of the game. It's how you get the power. All right. Hope you all tune in for more tutorials. And remember, watch my vlog.